Hi, and welcome to the first ever project based episode. I'm hesitating on what, what I'm supposed to say right now. I would I would normally say Herwodian Crafter podcast, but I'm not sure I'm not supposed to be saying this is a podcast anymore. Um, vlog, maybe? Uh, that might be accurate. Uh, this is episode 22 on my channel. And... Um, this is about uh, the Teola card cardigan, which is on... The pattern is from Linen Magazine 3, I think it was the... Uh, fall, Autumn, Winter issue of last year. I think there was another one. The Spring, so the newest, newest magazine is issue five so yeah but yeah i think uh, that uh, liner magazine issue issue three that's that at uh, that much of, i'm certain of um i think i start well i'm it's unnecessary to start, uh, start with when i start this because the next video clip that you're gonna see is is gonna be the one that i i had just started this this project on but yeah, I just I just uh, finished this project and let's just get on with the making process of this. <laughs> Hi there. I just finished recording episode 17. But as I mentioned there, I would talk about this new project that I started started on Thursday as a comfort for poor little me who had her wisdom tooth out and it just started smarting like a son of a <laughs> I just took some painkillers so it will be fine in a few minutes or half an hour anyway I can still talk <laughs> There's very few times that I won't be able to talk when I feel like it. But anyways, yes, uh, so if I manage to do this as I would want, want to do it, you're already aware that this uh, I don't know, video compilation? A bunch of videos is about the Dao Lai Gargan. I'm knitting and I just started it on Thursday so I've been knitting on it like a mad woman for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days with the help of an outrageous outland mar marathon I have managed to already use up one hank which I have I have six hanks, they're 150 gram hanks, of course caked up, um, of course you know that, but for some reason I still felt the need to say it. And yes, um, this is how much I have. Not too shabby, I'd say. Um, once again, I'm really not that religious with the pattern. Well, I am, and I'm not, because um, uh, the pattern says that the front front pieces and the back piece are knit separately. If you're new here, or if I haven't stated that very clearly, I really don't like sewing pieces together. 
I'm really, really kind of, that, that goes with my aversion, I'd say, aversion to weaving in ends. The same goes to sewing pieces together. I will do it if I have to, but as I see it, I really don't have to do that with this. It's a little bit tricky because I have to follow three different pattern sections at the same time. So it's a little bit tricky, but for me, the knowledge that I don't have to sew them together once I've finished the parts is worth it. So this is the whole body of the cardigan and I'm really really happy with how much I've gotten done in this this amount of time. So basically yeah front right side, the back, front left side. The other thing that I noticed if I'm reading the pattern correctly, which maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just misunderstanding or missing a part of it, but the way I read the pattern for now seemed to imply that there were faux pockets involved, which I am not having. I will not have faux pockets in my cardigan. And I'm quite sure I saw a picture of it with someone holding their hands in the pockets. I might remember incorrectly. Just a minute, I need to check that. Because for me, faux pockets is just about the stupidest thing, thing ever. Interesting. So yeah, there are pictures of, pe of the model holding her hands in the pockets. So I must be missing something about the pattern. But the way I solved it for now... I'm sorry, this is really not interesting to you. But I really kind of... Well then, if... if I'm reading this correctly, then there's something missing about the, about the pattern, but all I can see in the pattern is um, is that there is a part with the headline place pocket. Then it goes on to finishing the piece and then knitting the other piece and the place uh, placing the pocket on the other side and then all I see is pocket tops which is just the basic ribbing at the top of it. And then finishing with sew pockets and pocket tops in place. Maybe I missed something in the cast on. I, I don't think so. Oh no, not the cast on, but when, you, when you're moving from the bottom rib to the to the texture part. I hope I'm missing something from that. But I don't think so. So, what I've decided to do is I did like they suggested on the kind of the 
so this is the part I assume that will have the rib section on the top of the pocket and then I did a provisional cast on and joined that to the work and once I've finished uh, construction on this main main part I will do the top rib ribbing and then kind of knit down so I have the pocket the lining of the pocket basically yeah that's what it, I decided to do I probably I hope I'm going to come come across the conventional way of doing the pocket as is stated on the pattern, I'm hoping so. But I don't know. That seems silly to me. But yeah, I'm really, 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 really quite quite happy about this. Even though for now it's just continuing with the text texture stitches and. Uh, just knitting up to the armhole, which will take a while. It's supposed to be something like 60 centimeters tall until the armhole part. So I have my work cut out for me. But yeah, watching Outlander actually isn't the best program for this because it's one of the rare programs that I actually can watch without doing anything else at the same time. It's really rare for me. I usually need something to do with my hands and I'm just... Mm. <sighs> yeah. But yes, um... I have all kind of bits and pieces bubbling along here. Basically it, it's just these types of stitch markers are to separate this kind of um, the, the switch of the texture pattern and then this is to mark the middle of the of this this arrow pattern because when I'm knitting and watching television at the same time it really helps to know where the middle part is because of course you need to get the arrows to or V shapes to match up line up and that just helps me make a note of it and do what I need uh, do to continue it properly and not just without taking much attention to it, just knitting, knitting through and throwing that pattern off. But yes, uh, that's what I had for you right now. About this, I will go and continue my Outlander mar Marathon and continue knitting on this until my hubby and maybe get home. I don't know at what time of that it, that will be. I also probably need to eat at one point or another. But yeah, that's all I have, I have for now. See you later. Bye. Hi. So an update on where I am with the Daylight Guardian at the moment. Um, I've finished the main body of the, of the cardigan. So, here it is. I need to stand up. Just to show this. No, I can't even. I have a swiveling chair, so I'm not going to stand up on it and show you where it is. So, um, actually, maybe a little bit longer than I would have wanted it, but it's going to be a big sweater um, cardigan, anyways. So, um, it's over halfway to my knees, so it's over 
yeah it's, it's not at my knees but it's over halfway there and uh, right now I'm kind of stalled because it feels so fiddly I maybe should have just done as the pattern requested I did find I did find where the pocket instructions were they were like like I thought like I thought it last time I recorded about this it really isn't uh, supposed to be a uh, uh, fake sweat fake pocket or faux pocket or whatever it is there is a small small insert of what where how you do the pockets I still don't quite understand what what it was with the place pockets whatever it is but there is uh, a, a kind of section on doing the insides of the pockets but as I said I'm doing them I, I did the provisional cast on so I can just pick up the stitches and do that do it do them so this is where I am with that I still have quite many rows and this is just the first pocket but yeah I feel so fiddly with this big kind of attachment to such a small small piece of the pocket that I haven't touched this in I think weeks it feels like weeks because there's also the fact that at the moment I feel like every time I pick up a knitting project I get some stitches knit and then my kid decides that he absolutely needs to sit on my lap or push his head against the knitting or just your basic that just your basic thing that kids tend to do that that oh her attention is somewhere else I need to get attention hello here I am but yeah um this is where I am I'm still I'm still kind of wanting to fit the finished project but not feeling up to picking this up or feeling like my attention is grabbed by some other project rather than this one so this is kind of taking a little bit of a break but I wanted to update you on where I am right now so yeah um it's been over two months since I recorded that last bit it's already due the start of June and this project has been lang languishing basically because of the pocket linings now you're going to hear some background noise because my kid and my hubby are home so that's the way it is hopefully he won't scream too much if it if he does I'm gonna start this again but this background noises are because of that um, yeah so the pocket linings are probably the smallest part of this project and without a doubt they have taken the most time and specifically that pocket and that pocket that I showed you last uh, they are done actually the end result is quite good still some well actually I've woven in the in the ends but but it's still I haven't clipped them off because I thought that I might wait until this has been blocked but anyways here's I think this was the pocket that I had going on when I last showed this well when I recorded the last bit and uh, yeah it was uh, it was just not a good idea to knit, knit it straight on to the main bulk because because the main bulk of this cardigan 
and kind of more not not basically not that but the kind of having to turn it around and handling it that's the thing that made me not want to touch this because the um, with the other pocket I realized that that's not a good idea so that one I knitted all on its own and then just attached it to to this and that went like really fast so I'm not that smart I need to make it things dif too difficult for myself unnecessarily difficult but I really kind of like uh, do like how it's turned out this one looks good and even in, with the blogging it will kind of this a little bit kind of loose so I think that will even out on the wrong side you can't really tell very well except that I had a mistake in here so you can tell it because of that but you can't see the seams too much except for down here and then with the other pocket uh, I think it's even better except for the top part here which I kitchen it together but otherwise yeah but otherwise it's it's really really good and then um, then I actually I think this was I should I should I think maybe a couple of weeks ago that I got the pockets done and then I cast on in a kind of excited frenzy because I had finally I had gotten whatever I wanted to do with this done so I cast on the sleeves and I'm doing this these two at a time It's a lovely time when the kids are finding that they have a will of their own and how horrible it is when things don't go their way. It's such fun. But yeah, um, I cast them on two at a time because I, um, even though this is, the colors between the skeins are surprisingly even, but I can still tell where I've started uh, a new skein. A skein. I don't think that many people would notice, but basically, if if I lay lay it down and then just take a take a step back, I can see there's a faint line, which is not an issue. It doesn't bother me. A wiser person <laughs> would have alternated skein at least skeins at least towards the end, but I was too lazy. So because of that, I decided that I would do these two at a time. Because um, then these would be as close to a same to being the same color as they can be, even though they're on the other side. So I don't think anyone can compare and. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone else can even see the difference between the skeins. But yeah, um, I had a little bit left over from the pockets, and then uh, then one skein has been kind of used up. So so this is waiting for the last skein that I have to be attached. And um, yeah, it's, it's this has been surprisingly fast. I think this has taken me taken me maybe a bit over a week. No, no, I said it was two uh, a couple of weeks since I finished the pockets. So it has been a few weeks, but still I feel like I I, I don't feel stranded on Sleeve Island. So um, so yeah, I I think I have maybe a couple of rows left until I can kind of, until these are completely done and then I have the the col color or I don't know what that's called in if there's a specific name because it's not just here it's the whole front uh, of the cardigan so 
Another thing that I'm very proud of is that I, unless I'm completely mistaken, uh, I have calculated the amount of yarn that I need correctly. So I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. And if I have just a little bit too little, or if it, if it runs out before it's the proper length specified in the pattern, I don't mind, as long as it's not this, and it won't be because it's a 150 gram skein. And since I got the these mostly, I think it's somewhere like maybe from this up that I got that these are made from a single skein so I think I'm quite safe so probably the next video that I'm going to record with this project it will be the one that that the cardigan is finished so I can talk you through that and then I realized that I need to do kind of an introduction bit because as it is, I don't say who I am, or what this video is about, or anything. There's no introduction, it's just, it's just straight to the point, so I need to kind of make a short introduction before. But that's really not, not a bad thing, that, that since these are going to be kind of a... kind of video vlogging, or just vlogging, doing a video about my progress in one specific project I don't mind that the the introduction bit and the end bit are recorded at the same time so basically you can get you get the most up to date information in that in those so yeah that's about what I have from this for now so in for you in just a short short few seconds it will be a finished project which is quite intriguing for all in intents and purposes it's done it's an absolute monster um, yeah um, I think I was doing the sleeves when I last took any video of this, so I think I was somewhere around here, I think. So just a small, a small amount of sleeves knit up and then also the, the, is it a collar? I should know. Um, but yeah. Uh, in the pattern it's said to pick up and knit this part straight onto the cardigan but for once <laughs> uh, I considered what I had learned from doing the pocket from doing one of the pockets and I, I did start to pick them I pick the stitches up but I didn't even get all the way through picking up the stitches before I realized that it would be really kind of feel heavy. Sorry if you can hear drilling, one of my neighbors is doing something. Uh, but yeah, I, I realized that it would be a slog. So I decided to cast on the amount of stitches that it said to pick up, pick up from the edges. And that way it went a lot better and I got it done a lot faster and also considering I don't really like sewing things on or sewing kind of piece sewing the pieces together I th I'm really kind of happy at how it turned out you can't really see a seam that on this side and it, even on this side the seam is really really neat so I'm really happy with that and also the sleeves are sewn on and that went quite well well too. Uh, the only thing I might do is that I might need to do some surgery on the length because probably 
my mistake, most likely my mistake. I should have measured the, the body of that cardigan while it was kind of, while I was hanging it and kind of holding it upright so it would stretch. I didn't do that, so now this is absolutely massive. Um, it's halfway, uh, actually it's, yeah, the, but, uh, the cast on edge is at my knees. It's so low that I, I can't even conveniently show it to you on this angle. And since the pockets are right at the bottom, I can't even reach them well. well Let's, I think I may be able to show, show the bottom of it to you, but you'll have to excuse the mess on this couch, so. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so the top edge of the pocket is here, and I can barely reach it. So, I did a little bit of measuring, and I think that I will be taking maybe um, three pattern repeats off here if I decide to do this but otherwise this is such a lovely and comfy and and and, and warm so that that's the only thing that I might be changing and I'm not gonna wait around to upload uh, to doing that before I upload this video. If I decide to is if I decide to do that, then I will probably do I'll probably do a different video, maybe with some other bits and pieces that I I'm modifying, kind of finished projects. So yeah, but I just feel like if I w if this were to be just that small amount, kind of shorter, that it would be a lot more wearable for me. Uh, if it, I think if this didn't have pockets, I, if I hadn't done the pockets on here, then that would be a different ball game. It, it, it would probably be nice and long, and I would feel that I would I don't need to do anything. But because this has pockets, and I want to have them kind of at a comfortable, um, <laughs> I have I want to have pockets that I can put my hands in if I want to, and I can do this with that so I feel like it's kind of if I leave it this length I feel like the pockets are kind of almost unnecessary and for whatever reason I find that to be kind of a, an, on, an annoying thought so I will have to probably probably do some some surgery on this at some point but other than that I deem this project finished and I'm very happy that I have this and for once it was nice to work with a little bit of a heavier weight yarn this was a lot lot quicker because of that so yeah a thought occurred just just now that this might be a lovely cardigan to do with a lighter weight yarn. Maybe do some math and maybe probably I would need to cast on the <sighs> stitches for the biggest biggest size available or even more than that but but it's something to consider because this is really kind of a I really do like like the look of this so I don't know more than likely it will never happen but I don't know there's so many lovely patterns this is one of them but yeah I also did have to do a little bit of surgery on one of the I think it was this this shoulder because when I was doing the um, doing that when I was trying it that I was picking up stitches on the col on this collar edge I realized that one of the shoulders 
was kind of longer than the other one. I don't know how that happened. But yeah, I just just kind of looked at how, how much I would need to take off and then just cut that amount and picked up the stitches and just kitchen at the shoulders again like I did the first time. And yeah, it's it's a lot better. Uh, the amounts of stitches that I needed w went fine on here and yeah, I'm all around really kind of happy with everything that I've done with this. And this will most more than likely be uh, a cardigan that I will be slogging back and forth when I visit my mum because her house, especially in the winter, is, quite, is a little bit drafty and cold. And this will be a perfect jacket for those situations. So yeah. It's done. It's finally done. And I'm finally getting to do this kind of thing. This kind of an... I think you could call it an episode. I'm not sure I, you could call it a podcast, but I think you could call it an episode of my... vlogs or whatever you want to call him, but a new episode to my YouTube channel, so I've been talking about that for probably all year, this year, so now I have my first, ep uh, first episode for that, so hooray! Um, thank you for joining me, uh, thanks for your time, and um, if you liked what you saw, uh, please press the like uh, pre bleh, 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 press the like button on YouTube. And if you haven't already, maybe you mo might want to subscribe to my channel. And um, yeah, <laughs> until I see you next time. I hope you have so such a good time. I hope you have a very lovely time crafting. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>